and it is a very, very joyous happy birthday to happy one. Happy birthday, JT. Joy Taylor. Joy, happy birthday. Big plans today besides going back and watching our show again. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, guys. Thank you. No, no big plans, uh, but I appreciate the uh, the birthday love. And it's my birthday, Jenna, so I expect my Eric Mangini special shout out. I'm, I've Instagram. got your Eric Mangini. Oh, Eric Mangini's I, I, right here. I'm Go right ahead. Here. Joy, happy birthday. My birthday is tomorrow. I didn't realize oh. it was. Both so close together. I appreciate uh, you that much more. There you Only go. Only the best in uh, in January, Eric. Happy birthday to you also. <laughs> uh, <laughs> coming up on Undisputed, besides my birthday, do the Steelers need to make major changes this offseason? And should Tom Brady be scared of the Jaguars? Plus, Everson Walls, the former Cowboy great and now a finalist for the Hall of Fame, will be in studio with us. Undisputed is coming up next. Thanks for the birthday love. Jenna, back to you guys. Joy, enjoy the day. We will check back tomorrow and see how it went in case anyone's playing at home. My birthday is February 26th. So I'll give you all a moment to write that down. Oh, the 26th um. of February. Got it. And now let's move on. All right, last two teams standing in the AFSA. It is the Patriots and it is the Jaguars. Jaguars have done a little trash talking about New England and they're 0-7 against them. Pats have done no talking about the Jags and are oh not that concerned about anything the Jags have said. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. You kind of liked it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. They just play. But <laughs> I'm looking for a lot of reassurance, no. Coach. But but Tom Brady knows what's in store for him and his team this weekend, a Jalen Ramsey-led defense. So, Coach, I ask you, how tough is it going to be for the Jaguars' defense to stop Tom Brady in this offense? It's, it's going to be really tough for them to stop this offense, and for a lot of reasons. New England does a great job of, of attacking your weaknesses. They do a great job of, of identifying your strengths and making sure that they neutralize that. A guy like Calais Campbell and not letting him ruin the game. They're going to make sure those things are, are, are taking place. But there's certain things that they do just inherently in their system. There's, there's this, this idea of taking what they give you. And not a lot of quarterbacks are willing to do that. Not a lot of coordinators are willing to do that. But if you're going to give them the hitch all day, they'll take the hitch. If you're going to give them a certain run all day, they'll take that and they'll do it ten times in a row. And there's an unselfishness to that that a lot of teams don't really understand. And the second thing is they put pressure on you in different ways. They'll go in and out of no huddle. It'll be rapid fire, no huddle. They won't let you adjust. And then once they identify something that you do poorly, they don't give you a chance to fix it. They'll go through the whole drive and, and continue you're attacking. You're perfect, Coach. Well, well no, well, the, the, the point that you mentioned, I know you're going to show some plays in a little bit, but I want to drill down on that for a moment. The lack of ego about want, taking what they – you are given as opposed to trying to show what you can do and that is it's just so it might seem silly but I watched in oh I don't know the biggest football game that's been played in a year in the Super Bowl it felt to me at the once the at the second half of that game the Falcons were and they had been so great offensively all year one of the top seven scoring offenses ever that they were trying to continue to do what we're gonna do what we do when all game long they had been able to run the ball if they wanted to they, they weren't doing what you're discussing you see one of the problems with Pittsburgh to be fair and Todd Haley my buddy who's the D coordinator or offensive coordinator there is you you saw two of their big plays in that playoff game were fourth and short and they were bombs. Now, they ended up scoring on them. So, like, it worked out. But sometimes it feels like Pittsburgh is trying to prove a point. Like, we can do this even when you're guarding against it. That is the opposite of New England. There's no ego about we're trying. We're, we're just trying to run the most effective play given what you guys are showing. And it seems like it's the simplest thing in the world. Okay, if they're going to give you this five or seven yards, you take it. But people get so caught up in, I've got to get this player the ball, or I've got to take enough deep shots, or I've got to do, they get this checklist of, of things that they want to accomplish that's counterintuitive to exactly what you're being given and being told by the defense. And it, it's silly. So the one thing for this game, because you mentioned Calais Campbell wrecking the game. I, the Jags had 22 quarterback pressures against Pittsburgh. They had 20 against Buffalo. That's of the eight playoff games that have been had. The only team with 20-plus pressures is the Jags, and they've done it twice. One thing that we've seen the constant, if you're going to beat Tom Brady and this Patriots team in the playoffs, which there's not a lot of examples of it, getting to him with four, right? Being able to get constant pressure on him. It's how the Giants beat him a couple times. It's how Denver beat him a few years ago. Being able to get pressure on Brady and not having to blitz to do it. That is one thing the Jaguars have been good at throughout the season. 
Yeah, they, they are good at that, and, and that does help them. That, that plays into, into what they want to do. The question I have from Jacksonville from a, a purely defensive standpoint is can they take away the center of the field? Can they, can they deal with the slot receiver? Can they deal with Gronkowski? Can they deal with the backs checking down? So much success of New England has been inside the box, almost the, just outside the hashes, that they've got to figure out a way to cloudy that up. I, I was reading earlier this week that, that the, this Jaguars defense reminds the Patriots a little bit of the Giants defense, which is one of the few teams that have had a lot of success against the Patriots. Do you see any similarities there, besides the fact that Tom Coughlin was there for, for most of that? Well, I see, I see similarities in the sense that they're, they, they're able to get to the quarterback with four. They've got speed at linebacker. They're physical. They're disciplined. There's a brashness to it. Yeah. And, and I do like the fact, as much as I don't love Jalen Ramsey's comments, I do like the fact that they're going into Foxborough and they're not intimidated. That's really important. A lot of teams walk into that building, and they've almost lost the game before, before it even started. starts yeah. because they're caught up in the mystique of the uniform and, and things like that. How much – some examples from this past week's game when you talk about the Patriots taking what's given to them. Can you tell us? Yeah, let, tell let, us? Me, let me show you a, a few plays from, from one of the drives to me, which I think is indicative of, of who New England is and why it's so hard to stop. Okay, so if, if they've got a run play called here. Tom looks out. There's an off corner, and he throws a smoke pass. He just throws it out because there's a soft corner, and they pick up 13 yards. That's, that's the first play of the drive. So the run was there, didn't like it, went to pick up the 13 yards. This is second example. They don't let Tennessee wait or, or get set on second and one. They hurry up. The, cover, the TV coverage isn't even set. They pick up another nine yards. Okay, so the defense doesn't have a chance to catch their breath. They're not ready. And then they come back to it. The third thing they do is once they find a weak point, they run it again. They go no huddle again. They run this weak side run, which hurt them earlier. They don't give Tennessee a chance to recover. They don't give Tennessee a chance to, to make any type of adjustments. And they score. And that, to me, is what makes it so difficult to deal with them. Chris, Chris would make fun of me if I mentioned this, but he's not here right now. You'll appreciate it because you play with your son. That what you described at the very end is, oh, they, they have the wrong coverage out there. We're going to run the same play. It's what the most annoying Madden players do online. Like, they just, oh, I'm just going to no huddle over and over. And and over. Cause you know it. Cause you play, Because you play for the kid. And my, it does My it to sons them. do it to me all the time. <laughs> right. You just run this. You hold triangle, run to the line, do it again. And it's the... And I don't even know how to use the controller. Once they figure that out, it's like, oh, dad's not set. And they just keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And then they score and they're looking at me like... You're not very good. Right. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. I've been playing this for 10 years. So, so the, but the, and so I, I always hesitate to bring up the, that comparison because I know it's a video game, but the simplicity of it is that, like, you, you are in the wrong defensive alignment. I can run the same thing. What you see happen in the NBA is when a team's having a bunch of success again and again, a coach will use a timeout. NBA coaches get seven of them. There's not like the 40-second play clock to where you have to manage your timeouts, especially in the second half. Against New England, especially in the first half, it's something coaches should almost consider, like but, burning but, a timeout just to get the alignment right because they're going to keep going to it. it, it, it I agree, but it's one of the, those are wins. Like you, you know when you're sitting on that sideline, if you can get the other team to call a timeout, to burn a timeout early, because they're not, they're not adjusted on a, on a weak side run. You win. It's a huge win. And how many times can you do it? Because later in the game, right. the same thing's going to happen. You may need that timeout a lot more, mm -hmm. and now you can't, you can't keep making those decisions. I want to go back to the trash talking you were talking about with Jalen Ramsey. On paper, this looks advantage Patriots. So what, what do the, the Jaguars need to come in? Maybe they need a little bravado. Maybe they need a little more, you know, a little more machismo, a little more something to get in there and fire them up. Has, is trash talking in the end going to hurt them or going to help them? Well, team? look, the, the May West rule, if you got to tell someone you're a lady, you're not. You know, sometimes people <laughs> have to convince themselves that there's something that, that they are. Now, if that is a sincere belief that he has, and he's articulating that, and he feels like he's going to be able to back it up, and he thinks the other guys are, are, are going to thrive off that, okay, I get it. Now, we got to see whether or not they actually walk into the stadium and play with that same brashness as, as what they've said. And Tom, I thought, was mentioned it. He doesn't worry about talking about it. You know, he, he but it lets, means he hurt. He, they obviously, oh, obviously hurt. But he it. said, well, our styles are very different. I believe that you decide things with the way you play, not the way you talk about 
right. playing. Well, the, when he listen, said it rhymed, the, the FYI, uh, okay? Talk about it. It was say, say and play, because they rhyme. It's the two words. You got yeah, it. Yeah, the, right. the defense, That's why you, you, so I am here, you just make me better. The, You're making me better every the day. The defense that this Jag team reminds me of is the original iteration of the Legion of Boom in Seattle. You had a great front four. They eventually yeah. got Michael Bennett over there. You had guys that could rush the passer. You had corners you were afraid of. That Seattle team had better safeties. This team has better corners. But one of the iconic moments early in that tenure was that Seahawks team beating Tom Brady and Richard Sherman running up to him after the game and saying, you mad, bro. That is who Richard Sherman was. This is who Jalen Ramsey is. It, it might be foolhardy, but it's not fake. Like, he has been a sassy trash talker since the first game of his rookie year. He shouldn't change it now going into the playoffs. And so we'll see. All right, Coach, we got to get going. But okay. listen, in the commercial break, you stay here and just anything you want to say, you here. say. Happy we loved having birthday. you. Thanks Thank so much. I'll see you all weekend. Oh, <laughs> we'll see you have to tomorrow. Be good to Joy, guys. It's her birthday. Undisputed so starts right now. No mercy, no mercy, no mercy. Let's go face to face. I embrace debate.